Howdy folks, Nathan here with the Fastlane Car. I have the Nissan Altima 2019 and I have the Mazda 6 2019. They're very different cars. They both have their positives and they both have their negatives. And coming up next, I'm gonna tell you all about them. I wanted to get one thing out of the way right now, and that is we at TFL do like the Mazda 6 quite a bit. It's one of the best looking cars in its class. It's one of the best driving cars in its class, and we've never made a secret out of it. So, can the Nissan Altima compete? What's not to like about a 227 horsepower turbocharged four-cylinder? It's a 2.5 liter that puts out 310 pound-feet of torque and it's hooked up to a six-speed automatic transmission feeding the front wheels. Now in this configuration, it gets 26 miles per gallon combined. That's not so good. Here's the good news. Even though this car weighs well over 3,500 pounds, it moves and that has to do with the 310 pound-feet of torque. I just wish it was a little bit more efficient and I wish there were a few more gears. Where the Mazda shines is its performance. Even the naturally aspirated or normally aspirated four cylinder is pretty good, but this turbo, oh, <laughs> it flies. Great power. I really do appreciate the amount of work Mazda went into when they built this vehicle, especially from the aesthetic point of view, but also in terms of just their engineering. But it doesn't ride as nice as the Nissan. And it doesn't have all wheel drive. There's no option for it. The Nissan steering is very light. It doesn't communicate much. The steering in this car, even though it's electrically assisted, is far more precise and far more sporty, right? So this is the sportier fun car. What you're looking at here is a 182 horsepower four-cylinder engine. It's a 2.5 liter and it puts out 178 pound-feet of torque. It's hooked up to a continuously variable transmission, a CVT, and it feeds all four wheels. That's right, this has all-wheel drive. You know what else it has? Good gas mileage. Combined 30 mpg. For an all-wheel drive vehicle with a small displacement engine, that is pretty damn good. In the Nissan, acceleration is timid. One of the main reasons behind that is the continuously variable transmission. So CVTs, as you know, are not really known as being performance transmissions. However, Nissan has done a lot to make this car much more like an automatic transmission car. So it has fake shift points. It just feels super smooth. And it's probably the best example of a continuously variable transmission that they have. Really well done. Right about now you're asking, wait a minute, Nathan. What about the turbocharged engine that's available in the Nissan? You're right. There is a 236 horsepower turbocharged engine available. However, it's not available with all wheel drive, which is sort of a shame. Also, you might be asking, hey, wait a minute, isn't there a normally aspirated four cylinder engine available for the Mazda 6? And you're correct. Once again, with the Mazda, it's all about aesthetics and man, did they build a nice looking 19 inch wheel. It's wrapped in Falkland rubber. Altogether, <laughs> it's just, painfully good looking. These 17 inch wheels, which are wrapped in continental rubber, um, they don't really do it for me. I think Nissan missed an opportunity to put on really good looking wheels to actually make the car even look better.
Nissan's changed the recipe yet again for the Nissan Ultima and I'm really glad they did because I always thought it was kind of boring and it wasn't quite there. Now I think it's a pretty damn good looking car and I think it looks good in red. Here's the interesting part. Now it is 193 inches long. The good news for you is that despite the fact that it is a long, wide, tall car, it is still a comfortable car and it is still a good looking car. But how does it compare to the Mazda? I'm sorry. As much as I like the Nissan's appearance, and I think it's a handsome car, <laughs> Mazda went to town with this design. It looks great. The Kodo design language that they have put together has been a huge success for Mazda. This car is... I mean, just look at the lines and look at what they did with the color. Now, this is a red, but it's such a beautiful red and it's so deep and they actually care about the way the lines are reflected in the body design. Impressive. You know what's interesting? Even though it looks like it's a bigger car, it's not. It's actually 192 inches long. Now this is where things start to change because the Mazda requires a little bit more athleticism to get into, just a little tiny bit more. You sit a little bit lower. Now I do drop the seat down as far as it can go because I have a fairly tall torso. And even with the sunroof, I do have some headroom, but not a ton. That's a problem. It needs a little bit more headroom. Here's the good news. Just look at this interior. They matched the exterior in terms of design. The aesthetics are beautiful. However, there are a few things missing, <laughs> mainly electronic gizmos. With that being said, the layout is quite nice. I mean, look at this, wood, leather, two different colors of leather. Even their plastics are extremely well presented. Very nice. But there are a couple minor things that I really wish Mazda would address. I'm not a very big fan of the way they designed their screen. It's too small. In order to get into the Mazda, I have to drop my head down a little bit more because Look how far this comes down. Once you're in, it's not too bad, but there are a couple things you should need to know. Headroom is not great. <laughs> if I bring my head back, I'm hitting the roof for sure. I'm 6'1". My legs, actually sitting behind myself, pretty good room. Unfortunately, if we went over a bump and I was even leaning forward, I'd still hit. Fortunately, the seats are quite comfortable. And once again, the layout back here Beautiful. The Nissan's a different story. Much easier to get in and out of. And the seats are even more comfortable. Part of that has to do with the fact that these are zero gravity two seats. That's right. It is very comfortable. I've driven this car actually all over the Rocky Mountains and back and forth <laughs> from Boulder to Denver a few times. It's very comfortable. But you know what the problem is? It's this. I like to sit almost bolt upright, like this. But with this thing, you can't adjust it fore and aft, just up and down. So no matter how I adjust it, my head is forward. So I always have to have the seat back. Here's the good news. Look at this interior. Much better than the old Nissan Altima, much better. The woods look great. The combination of fabrics are pretty good. The color combination is quite good as well. I really like the layout. I like this screen. I like it a lot more than Mazda. However, the Mazda still is more aesthetically pleasing. It's just a better looking interior. But this is a very functional, comfortable interior. And Nissan has gone a long way from the old days of having components that felt like they were going to fall apart in my hands. So this is a nice place to be. Controls are easy to reach and 
the technology bundled in this vehicle, hard to beat. Nissan's backseat is a different story. Easier to get into, easier to get comfortable in, much more headroom, really good legroom. Once again, I'm 6'1", and I'm behind myself. I actually not only have a little bit more usable space and a very nice cushion, but I also have a lot of room underneath the seat for my feet because I have big, horrible feet. The overall comfort is better in the Nissan in the back. That is a sexy looking boot lid. Unfortunately, it's not a sexy trunk by comparison. Let me explain. That is 14.7 cubic feet of space. It's not best in class. It still has a decent amount of room and underneath you have a donut and a little tiny extra bit of space. There's actually quite a bit in the Nissan Altima. 15.4 cubic feet of space. That is on the higher end of the class. And underneath here, not only do you have a jack and all the goodies, but you have a donut, not a full-size spare. That Mazda 6 is the signature series, and it comes in around $37,000. That Nissan Altima is the SL and it comes in at around $33,000. Now, if you get them comparably equipped at the same level, they do come out at nearly the same price. Which one would I choose? Well, obviously for fun <laughs> and for beauty, the Mazda. But I do live in Colorado, and unlike almost every other automaker out there other than Subaru, Nissan does offer all-wheel drive, and it's a decent all-wheel drive system. So it's an interesting balance, and I have to commend Nissan for building a very comfortable, quiet car. Which one would you guys choose? For the Fastlane Car, this is Nathan. Don't forget to go to tflcar.com for news, views, real-world reviews, and more head-to-head -head reviews. See you next time.